Yeah. Well, it's seven o'clock by the phone here. Um, in the absence of Chairman Blanchett, um, Friday morning I was asked by the members to uh, chair this meeting. Uh, could we have a motion? So moved. Effect? Second? Second. Move motion and second on me being Chairman Pro Tem for the meeting. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Pledge of Allegiance, if you all see him. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, item three, rules of order. We run routinely by Robert's rules and the um, rules that we adopted at the meeting in November, organizational meeting. I'd remind everybody if you have one of these things, have it on silent or shut off, please. Um, four, adoption of minutes from the following Ellsworth City Council meetings. November 19, regular City Council meeting. Uh, December 17, regular Council meeting. Any errors or corrections? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Manager Cole. A couple items tonight. Uh, first, uh, February 1st is the date for changes to the city's recycling program, which is fast upon us. Uh, our public works folks have done a great job of pulling materials together, and rather than me getting into the do's and don'ts, I refer the public to our website. Uh, they've made a great video showing the materials and the do's and don'ts of what to do just uh, for, for just uh, as backup information. Uh, Ellsworth, like many communities, uh, has been forced by the marketplace uh, to limit certain recyclables. Uh, and uh, uh, come February 1st, these rules will go into play. And again, go to the website or call City Hall and uh, get you the information. Uh, so other item, uh, Winter Carnival is on Saturday, February 9th, and Sunday, February 10th, and I assume maybe somebody on the Recreation Commission would like to talk about this, so I will smartly defer to them. <laughs> and uh, I will also defer to uh, Councillor Moore on the announcement of the trail extension. So that re abbreviates my report. Thank you, David. Committee reports. Anybody have committee meetings they need to talk about? <coughs> Councillor Dale. Uh, so the uh, Recreation Committee met, um, Councillor Grindle and I um, attended. Uh, Downey's Family YMCA, their uh, basketball season is well underway. The, they're heading into the tournament season for the older um, kids, and the recreational basketball just got started, um, and they have 54 teams, so it's pretty impressive. Uh, the ice rink is open. Times are posted on the Facebook site, which is the Ellsworth Ice Rink. Uh, you can, on there is are times for regular skating, but there's also time set aside for pond hockey, so that uh, youth can get out and, and um, play that. Um, and so the uh, Winter Carnival that was just mentioned, a rundown of activities on uh, Friday, February 8th, will be a movie night at the Moore Center. Uh, family Dinner 515, a uh, movie from 6 to 7.30. Uh, Saturday, February 9th, uh, there will be, uh, taking place at, at Woodlawn, there will be a food, food vendor there. The ice rink will be open all day. Um, at 7.30, mm -hmm. we'll start mm -hmm. activities with a snowshoe race, registration. Race will begin at 8, um, and uh, I think that's a, about a two-mile course. Uh, 9, 9 a.m. will be snowmobile rides will begin until around noon. Um, 9 a.m. registration for the cardboard sledding contest. 10 a.m. sledding competition will begin. Uh, from 4 to 6.30 will be open swim at the Y, all ages, families. 7 o'clock will be fireworks at the high school. And 8 o'clock will be open mic at the Grand. Um, so start practicing. Um, Sunday, February 10th, um, there's a ice fishing derby that's taking place, and that's actually taking place um, all weekend. 
um, with weigh-ins um, taking place. Uh, and 9 a.m. will be the return of the Clambu Classic Pond Hockey Tournament, where no skates are allowed, so what could possibly go wrong with that? Um, it's a good, good time teams have fun, but they are hurt the next day. So. Uh, and I think that's, that's it. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? Yes. Council of uh, January 9th, I attended the, uh, actually, Council of Phillips and I uh, attended the um, Harbor Commission meeting. And uh, Manager Cole was there to update us on uh, the, the uh, status of our um, project to extend the uh, uh, path, the, the Harbor Trail. And uh, we got, you got a letter from the uh, Agricultural Conservation Forestry Extension, That's if I correct. remember that yep. correctly. And uh, <clears throat> I think you implied that uh, funds could very possibly be available and uh, that we need to uh, get to a final design and then uh, work on it from there. The uh, big, the real big project at the harbor is to uh, change out the gas tank. And uh, Andrew McCulloch, the, the uh, architect, uh, came up with a, a newer design by, that would involve in, installing a longer tank, but narrower in diameter, to allow it so that uh, you could put it under the under the uh, parking lot, but depending on what the soil is, you wouldn't have to put it quite as deeply as you would uh, uh, a shorter, thicker tank. Um, we're really excited about this because we think that uh, selling both diesel and regular gas is going to bring a lot more motors in to, to buy gas, and it should show up in our uh, uh, profits for next year. Uh, the harbor master uh, gave a report saying that the Army Corps of Engineers would be wrapping up uh, their survey of the, of the harbor and it's been uh, quite a long time that we've been dealing with the uh, filling in of the, of the channel down at the, the middle buoy, buoy number four. And it was kind of encouraging. It seems like the Army Corps is, is taking a little bit more active interest in uh, helping us out down there to the point where they it su suggested that they're going to look at the possibility of changing the channel somewhat, putting it slightly to the west so that maybe it won't fill in quite so quickly. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, also been some interest by members of the community to develop a, some kind of a symbol for the harbor to be used in, you know, as a logo for uh, uh, events that are going on and, and so forth. So we're going to see how that goes. We haven't used the ice eaters very much, and that's a good thing, because uh, that means they aren't using any electricity. But the few times that we've had to use it, they work just fine. So I, th I think this is going to be a, a very good thing. And finally, uh, just a, a recap of something that was uh, mentioned previously, the total fees collected for this past season was pretty good, $28,585. And we expect that to increase next year, all things being equal. That's it. Thank you. Any other committee reports? <clears throat> okay. Uh, citizens' comments. This is the time in the evening where you're invited to come to the podium, give us your name, you can talk to us for up to three minutes about anything that is not on the agenda. Um, anybody wish to speak? Okay. Well, thank you for coming anyway. Presentation of award. Excuse me. I was debating. <laughs> and you lost. <laughs> I waited too long. Sorry. It wasn't working elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You know my plight that I have, and I don't like coming here to hear myself speak. I really don't. I'm very saddened by having to come here and speak. 
I have an issue of, of a neighbor deliberately pouring water onto my property. It's not a water runoff situation. The water didn't create the pipes, didn't create the avenue for it to run. It didn't jump into the pipes from the gutters, didn't jump into the downspout to the pipes, didn't get covered by tar. It was created by a person. I've had three councillors out there, a city manager, code enforcement officer. They all say it's water runoff. I don't get it. It's definitely a problem. And now I find evidence that it may be ruining my garage because now I'm separating from my house. I took a complaint. I do believe that complaint got half-heartedly thrown out, which is disgusting to me. I may be, some people call, unreasonable person, a big mouth, a crazy person because I care about stuff, but I don't care what people think. I don't care what people think. But this is the problem. There's a state law that shows it's a problem. You have a property ordinance, even though it don't pertain to my situation, because it belongs to a different type of group of properties, says it's a problem. You know, there's a saying, for evil to triumph only takes a few people to do nothing. I left something out of that. Thank you. Thank you. And for the record, the three councillors were not there at the same time, so it was not an illegal meeting. Okay, presentation of awards. We don't have any tonight. Uh, consent agenda, I'll read down through. Um, at this time, we've had a request from the Harvard Commission Chair to withdraw item 11. Uh, they're going to rethink that and uh, bring back either February or March meeting. So um, can I have a motion to remove item 11? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion from the agenda? All those in favor? OK, 11's gone. Uh, consent agenda is used for uh, routine items. Uh, we'll go down through them and read them. Um, if any council wants any of them uh, discussed, we'll remove it from the consent agenda. We'll have one vote on the approved consent agenda when we're done. Item 9, Council Order 011900, request of the Deputy Treasurer Tax Collector for approval of a real estate purchase installment contract between the City of Ellsworth and Peter Cabanalis. Item 10, Council Order 011901, request of the Harbor Commission to accept a resignation letter from Arthur G. Corliss. Junior with a term to expire on June 30, 2021. Agenda item 12, Council Order 011903, appointment of Melissa Garland as the Ellsworth representative on the Frenchman Bay Regional <coughs> Shellfish Committee. Item 13, Council Order 011904, request of the Recreation Commission to accept a resignation letter from Morgan Saro with a term to expire on June 30, 2019. <clears throat> Agenda item 14, Council Order 011905. We requested the Housing Authority to appoint Jefferson Clark to the City of Ellsworth Housing Authority Board, term to expire on January 1, 2024. Item 15, Council Order 011906. Request of the Housing Authority to appoint Eleanor Jones to the City of Ellsworth Housing Authority Board, term to expire January 1, 2024. 16, Council Order 011907, request to the Housing Authority to appoint Raymond Williams to the City of Ellsworth Housing Authority Board, term to expire January 1, 2024. Item 17, Council Order 011908, request of the Deputy Treasurer Tax Collector to accept payments 
on properties redeemed during the 30-day redemption period and authorize the city manager to release said properties through municipal quick claim deeds. Any one of those items council want to take off and discuss? Mm -hmm. If not, I would entertain a motion on the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the uh, consent agenda. Second. Second by Councilor Hamilton. All I need to, all those in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Uh, new business, number 18, public hearings and action on the applications for issuance of the following business licenses. Uh, first one is Jeff and Diane Kelly Locos, DBA 86 this, 125 Main Street, to upgrade from a City Class C mm -hmm. Victual and Liquor license to a City Class B Victualer Liquor and Amusement, and renewal of a State Restaurant Class 3 and 4 Malt and Vinus Liquor license. Um, staff is all set with these. We have on that one, we have all the signatures. Uh, any questions from Council? This is a public hearing open. Anybody wish to speak on this application for a license? I asked the question uh, because it's an upgrade. They do they need to be here as new ones do? And the explanation was they're adding amusement, uh, so it has nothing to do with the liquor license itself. So we allowed them not to be here. So public hearing is closed. Council action. Mr. Chairman, no approval of the request of 86 this for renewal. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, second one is GC Pizza Hut LLC, DBA Pizza Hut, 211 High Street, for renewal of a City Class C Victualer and Liquor License and renewal of a State Restaurant Class 4 Malt Liquor License. We have all the signatures on that one. Um, any questions of council? <clears throat> this is a public hearing. Anyone wish to speak on the application for Pizza Hut? Public hearing is closed. Council action. Mr. Chairman, move approval of the relicensing of uh, Ellsworth Pizza Hut. Second. Motion and a second. The discussion. All those in favor? Animus. Uh, next one is Susan Sherbel, DBA Dion's 35 Eastwood Lane for renewal of a Class C Victualer and Liquor license and renewal of a State Restaurant Class 3 and 4 Malt and Vinus Liquor license. Um, we have a request um, in our packet from Code Enforcement and the Fire Inspector uh, to not do this. We're going to extend their current license 90 days uh, to allow them to get a plan of correction on some issues that they have out there. This will allow them to remain open and functioning, um, but we'll hold the feet to the fire to get it done. Uh, we have a representative from uh, the business here. If councilors have any questions, uh, we've talked about this quite a bit in finance, um, and this is a way that uh, we chose to, to do it, is to give them similar to what we did with a um, motel a couple of years ago. It worked very, very well. Um, Do you want a motion on this? I, I've got to go through the... Okay. Um, just for the record, the 90-day extension will start March 1st and May 31st. Um, and as we did with the previous um, opportunity to do this, once the inspection is done, um, the city will absorb the costs of the second public hearing notice in the paper because we've delayed them. We did that with the previous one, felt it was the right thing. Um, and uh, once mm -hmm. they get inspected, we'll do that and schedule them on the next available agenda. Uh, but this way they can keep working. Any questions of council? The public hearing is open. Anyone wish to speak on this? Public hearing is closed. Council action. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I recommend approval of the 90 day extension to the city licenses for Susan Sherbel doing business as uh, Dion's or Dion's? Dion's. Uh, 35 Eastwood Lane for renewal, et cetera, of the licenses. Got a motion? Second. Second by Hamilton. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one, Sideline Sports Bar, 367 State Street, Unit A, for a new City Class B license, fictional liquor and amusement, and a new State Restaurant Lounge Class 11, malt, vinous, and spirituous liquor license. As required by our ordinance, would you introduce yourself, the owners? Barker. Barker. Welcome. Thanks for choosing Ellsworth to have a business in. This is the old FUD records. What about the grand? Oh, I had checked that off. I'll go right back to that, if that's okay. Uh, thank you for being here. The heck with the grand. Nick doesn't care. <laughs> um, Sidelines meets all the requirements. All the signatures are on the application. There's some issues uh, with sprinkler systems, stuff like that, that we can we, 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 we can authorize a license, just they won't get an occupancy permit until it meets all of it, so they can't use it. Um, any questions of council besides the grant? Public hearing, anybody wish to speak on this? Hearing closed. Council action. Mr. Chair, move approval. Second. Motion a second for approval. Further discussion? All those in favor? Back up one. The Grand, 165 Main Street for renewal of a city class B license, victual or liquor and amusement, and renewal of a state other auditorium theater class 3, 4 malt and vinous liquor license. All the signatures are on the application. Any questions from council? This is a public hearing open. Anyone wish to speak? <clears throat> public hearing closed. What's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, move approval of the request of the grant for renewal of their license. Second. Motion to second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, item 19, Council Order 011909, request to the police chief to approve the Regional Communication Center third shift dispatch services agreement between the Hancock County Commissioners and the City of Ellsworth. Captain Byer, are you going to speak or is the City Manager? Yeah. Uh, Captain, why don't you come up? I, I would, while Troy's coming up, I just mentioned that, as you know, this was the a renewal of an agreement that was formed, uh, I believe, years ago and uh, it involves a three percent increase is set by the county commissioners uh, captain yes yeah that's I uh, believe the only su substantial change is a three percent increase yeah he pretty much covered it um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a renewal every year um, I think uh, like you said there's an increase that's built into this three percent for the year build build uh, monthly for a total at the end of the year yeah I would add that uh, I spoke to the police chief before he went away to the FBI Academy about this and he said it's working well for you and he said absolutely and want to move mm -hmm. forward with another year any questions of the captain well done what's your pleasure we have a move to approve the agreement between the City of Ellsworth, Maine, and the Hancock County Commissioners for the Regional Communication Center third shift dispatching services as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Item 20, Council Order 011910, request of the Fire Chief to approve a lease purchase for 26. Scott X3 Pro self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBA units, and a Scott Revolve Air Fill Station, and authorize the city manager to sign all necessary doc agreements. Chief. Good evening. Uh, Richard Dover, Fire Chief. Uh, as you know, we have a program in place now that replaces our air packs on a rotational basis to keep current with new and updated equipment. Um, last year, when I proposed the budget for this fiscal year's purchase of that, we were uh, approached by a vendor uh, and the manufacturer of the packs that we use uh, basically with a promotional deal that got us into a much newer pack 
Uh, and the gist of this is to replace the entire fleet of them uh, and then sell off the ones that we currently are using at various levels. Uh, the, the advantages of these, this new product that they are proposing to us is it has several safety features in, involved in it. Uh, first and foremost, the straps that strap it onto the, the firefighter's body are removable off these packs that allow us to launder them. Uh, this is a big issue that we're trying to battle uh, in all areas of everything that we do to reduce contaminants and mostly carcinogens that are attached to the uh, clothing and these packs when we fight fires. Um, currently we do have a dedicated washing machine for our turnout gear and that would be the, the use for uh, the, the way that we would clean these harnesses off these air packs. Uh, the, there's a couple other key safety features that come with this promotion or this uh, proposal that they have. Uh, one is a pack tracker system that allows us to uh, be able to, uh, on the outside of the building, monitor the, each of these packs as the firefighters are using them. So we can keep track of their air management. Uh, if they're using an excessive amount of air, we can uh, signal to them and, and if they're not paying quite enough attention to it, we can signal them and tell them that they need to uh, come out of the building. Uh, if there's an imminent collapse or something of that nature, we can also notify each individual pack user and their pack alerts them to, to evacuate a building. Uh, a current way that we do that now is we sound the air horns on the trucks that may or may not be heard depending on the physical location that the firefighter is in, in especially some of the bigger buildings. Uh, so that's kind of in a nutshell this whole process. You do have a lot of background information that gives you more detailed information on that. Be happy to answer any questions to help better understand that. Um, Chief, can you? Um, you don't have to go through every number, but you've given, given us some backup that shows uh, a 10 year current SCBA replacement program. Correct. And the associated costs, and then the associated costs with this new program that has a 10 year bumper to bumper warranty on the packs. Um, could you just give the public some of those numbers so you see this is a this is a net savings? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I, I laid out uh, our current replacement program over a 10 year span uh, with a slight cost of in, uh, cost increase of the cost of each of the packs so you can see that. Uh, with an estimated uh, maintenance and repair plan on the existing packs that we would currently have. Uh, and that total over a 10-year cycle comes up to $323,500. Um, the proposed replacement program for the purchase, uh, lease purchase of, of 26 air packs and also a air fill station uh, totals $236,399. So that's a potential decrease in appropriations over those 10 years of $87,101. Uh, that does not include uh, what we could gain by the sales of our existing packs and we do have some interest already in in uh, 15 of those packs and 20 others that we could still uh, sell uh, and those monies could come back and help pay for this project Anyone else questions of the chief? Well, I, I debated asking you to do this but uh, That amount of money is a lot of money Certainly is. And I, we've talked about it. We know how important these are. But maybe you could just say a few words for anybody who's watching out there as to why these uh, air packs are so important. You, you, you said some things, but just generally speaking. Um, obvious to us, maybe not necessarily so obvious to everyone, uh, these air packs are our lifeline. That We are bringing fresh air with us as we enter into a burning building where the atmosphere is what we call ideal H, immediately dangerous to life and health. So if you're in a building that is on fire uh, and you're breathing the smoke and the contaminants, it's going to kill you. Uh, these packs provide us that lifeline to be able to get into a building, do our jobs, and be able to go home at the end of the day. Thank you. One of the things that I've mentioned as we've talked with Chief <coughs> in the last month and a half, two months, well, since the last budget year, is this allows it, the department to standardize all their air packs to one type, one model, 10-year uh, bumper-to-bumper warranty with the electronics, 
It comes with a heads-up display, so you don't have to look down and look at your gauge on your regulator. It's right here in your vision. Um, mm -hmm. And a few years ago, for the people that were here, we did this with our masks. Mm -hmm. We standardize all the masks to meet the newest standard. So everybody didn't have to get fit tested on three different masks. You had one, you knew what it was, and you were really good with it. So um, on, on its own um, information, I think this is a great project. But what nailed it for me was we could show with the sale of half of these packs, $110,000 sale coming back um, with the reduction in the cost over 10 years. I, it's, I think it's a win-win for the city and, and I'm supportive of it. One last key component to some of the financial side of this, we have 38 existing air cylinders that are going to come to their end of life this calendar year. Uh, that means they need to be thrown in the trash uh, and new ones purchased and that totals it in its own uh, $33,250 worth of bottles. So instead of investing in those bottles um, for the current program, that money can be better spent, I think, in newer technology. Anyone else? If there's anyone in the public <coughs> who wants to speak on one of these agenda items, just get, get my attention. I'm not ignoring you, but if you want to get up and speak, let me know. If there's no other questions, anybody wish to form a motion? Mr. Chairman, move to approve the request of the fire chief to lease purchase 26 Scott X3 Pro self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBA units from fire tech and safety and a Scott revolve um, air fill station from IPS in the amount of $236,399 and to authorize the city manager to enter into a municipal lease purchase agreement with Gorham Leasing Group with an annual installment payment of $52,100.41 for five years and also authorize the council order 011909 per the attached written order. Do we have a second? I believe it's... Uh is it zero one one nine one zero? The agenda and the item don't appear to line up. You were right, John. That's how it's written. I just think it's misprinted. Well, I was kind yeah. of wonder. I figured they, they don't make mistakes in the office. They don't make mistakes in the office. I'm no, sure it was don't. a computer error. Yes. Um, well, the actual the actual obligation is O nine. But O nine refers to. The police chief's request. On the agenda. It's printed on the, on the, um, on the packet. Uh, okay. On mine, it's yeah. authorizing lease financing up to two hundred thirty-six thousand. Yeah, but, but but the order on the agenda kicked it one more, oh, so oh, I she, see. she's accurate. Which is in sequence on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. So staff will take care of that yeah. um, before it gets so signed I, and sent. Or? I need to rescind council order. Could you start from the beginning? <laughs> Just change the order number. Uh, that final comment would be order number 011910. Good catch. Second. Who wrote we have that? a motion and a second. Yeah. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. Number 21, Council Order 011911, request of the Deputy City Manager to award a $3,055,400 general obligation bond, GOB, for various projects that were previously financed through bond anticipation notes. Ms. Mo. Thank you. So back in 2016, the City of Ellsworth authorized an issuance of $1,955,400. Um, if it's general obligation bonds, um, this was for the new fire engine, new compactors and balers at the transfer station and recycling center, uh, portion of State Street, um, some sewer improvements, sidewalk upgrades, 
Um, also the intersection of State Street and Forest Avenue as well as um, Forest Avenue extension is what we call Lee Jock Street now. And in 2018, uh, the City Council authorized an issuance of $1.1 million and this was for the drainage project located on State Street and Forest Avenue, um, some upgrades to the Bayside Road, as well as the Harbor Fuel Tanks and the Water Street parking lot. Well, each of these um, bands are now coming to maturity <coughs> and we needed to refinance them for permanent financing for a 10-year program. We did send it out to seven uh, local banking institutions and we received uh, six back um, with the lowest interest rate um, from Key Bank at 3.061%. I did want to note this does not require public hearing just because it's already been authorized by the City Council. Questions of the city man, Deputy City Manager? So, uh, just for, for the record, for the public, could you just explain a little bit in terms of the, that differentiation between the ban, um, permanent financing, why why you enter into a ban? And Absolutely. Of, so yep. So we borrow um, an anticipation note. So while we're working on the construction project, we have an estimate um, before we go into a project. Um, so we have that estimate. And once the project comes to completion, we have better numbers and we can borrow the, the real numbers. Um, so then, and so anticipation notes are borrowed on a short-term basis, and the max that the city has in its charter is three years. Um, so then you go into permanent financing, which has, is usually a longer term. Thank you. Any other questions? If you want to get up and ask, you said there's no public comment. So no, no, there's oh, no, no, no public no. hearing here. Public hearing. Well, I mean, so, public yeah. hearing. Yeah. If it's germane to this issue, yes, sir. Yep. She was talking about that some of that money was set aside to do the compactors and stuff up to the dump. They never was done. They measured. They installed the end of February. Well, I'm sorry. What? They've been measured. We have a contractor. Oh, okay. They'll be, they'll, they'll All be right. done the end of February. All right, but now also there was additional funds asked to do that work. Is that correct? Uh, a couple meetings ago? No, that's where we awarded the contract, I believe. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, I, I was trying to figure that out because I know that there was budgeted out back then. Yeah. It was never done. And then I thought there was, okay. Yeah, because right. I, I, I believe, Gordon, that the, the comment will be um, funds come from future borrowing. Right. is what we use and that's the future borrowing right okay. here. And we also had some budgeted amount yeah. Yeah. Um, that we had been collecting over a period of a few years and then we needed the additional for the for the baler and the compactors. Okay. Yes, sir. Anybody else? What's your pleasure? You're not going to say no to camp for me. <laughs> Mr. Chair, move to award the general obligation bond <clears throat> low bid to Key Bank at an interest rate of 3.061% for a $3,055,400 general obligation bond as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, ma'am. Twenty-two Council Order zero one one nine one two request of the finance director to withdraw thirty-two thousand from the capital reserve account to reimburse costs of an officer's training at the police academy. All right, so this is um, our ongoing battle to uh, get us up to staff with hiring uh, Levi Soper of the Southwest Harbor Police Department. Um, he's an academy graduate. He's been out of the academy for about a year and a half. Uh, so he's, he was once a uh, traffic uh, parking enforcement officer for us, so he, he's familiar with the area, familiar with our computer system, because Southwest uses the same system that we have. Uh, so the money is uh, basically uh, prorating for his time at reimbursement back to Southwest for his time at the academy. By, by state statute, right? Right, yes. I'd suggest that this is probably cheaper than sending one, training one, and paying one, and travel one. Uh, yeah, we, and while he's already trained, uh, we should be able to get him on patrol. Should cut down overtime costs. 
Excellent. This is good value for the taxpayers of Ellsworth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair? <clears throat> Questions? Motion. Motion. Move to approve the request of the finance director to withdraw $32,000 from the capital reserve account to reimburse the cost of an, of an officer's training at the police academy. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right, number 23, executive session to discuss labor contracts in accordance with MRSA Title I, Chapter 13, Section 405, Paragraph 6D. Mr. Chair, move to go into the executive session. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? For the public's um, input, we will have no action after this. We will just come out of executive session <coughs> and adjourn so you folks can go home. Thank you very much.